Conway. To make. She created the laugh track to our lives. <laughs> At 71, this comedy icon gives no sign of slowing down. Recently, we caught up with her. How would you describe your own humor? I'm really more of a, a reactor to other people's humor than I am kind of funny by myself. Carol Burnett may not think she's funny, but millions of fans do. In tonight's special, Burnett was joined by the original cast. There's more gray, less hair but the closeness and spontaneity remain. Well, we gotta see this. Right. I'm gonna watch it, oh, okay. <laughs> After so many years, these performers are linked by more than showbiz. They practically share the same DNA. We were definitely a family. But while Carol's professional family was effortless, her own family was not. This little girl was raised in poverty, born to alcoholic parents, the story of why she tugged on her ear during her television show may tug at your heart. I'm told that this, yeah. this was for your grandmother. When I first got on television 100 years ago, I called her, I said, Nanny, I'm gonna be on TV, and she said, be sure and say hello to me. And I said, I don't think they're gonna let me say hello, but I, I'll pull my ear for you, and that, that's your signal. Nanny, as Carol called her, was more than a grandmother. She was a surrogate mom. What did she mean to you? She was uh, my rock. She was eccentric and kind of nutty and <laughs> funny, but uh, I knew I could count on her, and I knew she loved me. That love paid off. Today, of course, Carol Burnett is part of Hollywood royalty. Ironically, this comic superstar grew up in the heart of Hollywood. Block north of Hollywood Boulevard and a million miles away from Hollywood. This is the tiny Hollywood apartment where Carol's family struggled to make ends meet. Nanny cared for Carol and her sister. Her mother lived down the hall. Dad was in and out of the picture. People say, oh, you had a rough upbringing or this or that. I, don't, I never looked at it that way. Even though my folks were both alcoholics, that, so that is a matter of, of abuse to a child, but they had a disease and um, they knew they loved me. You know, we were poor, but then so was everybody else in the neighborhood. Those early experiences so profound that Burnett would later write about them in her autobiography. From that book would spring a play. The play was set back in that impoverished neighborhood, and Carol Burnett would live there once again. Can you look down and remember the little girl who was there? Oh, yeah. In fact, when my daughter Carrie and I were writing a uh, play about my grandmother, my mother, and my upbringing, uh, we went back to that room, and I um, rented the room. It was like 12 by 16, and I had a pull-down Murphy bed, and that's where I was raised with my grandmother. And I would take my laptop there and, and um, kind of sat there and see what would come out. It was very weird to be in that same room and to see, you know, little ghosts of uh, Christmas past and get the vibes. And uh, once the play opened, uh, I let the room go. And letting go is something that Carol Burnett is determined to do. You either keep on trucking or you pull the covers up. You know, I choose not to pull the covers up. Being with other people, doing, going, moving. Got a dance. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs>